Today, we're going to be talking about shoulder mechanics. Hi, and welcome to The Pilates Show, where we explore fun, innovative, and creative tips and techniques for the movement educator. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hurt, and today we're going to take a look at shoulder mechanics. We get so many questions inside of our studio and in our teacher training sessions about shoulder girdle mechanics. I feel like this is a really often misunderstood area of the body that we really should dive into and understand why it's built the way it is and how we can easily uh, help our clients to facilitate better movement, uh, loss of tension, and really build true strength in this area of the body. We're gonna be going to our friend here, Mr. Skeleton, so that we can take a little bit of a look at the anatomy of the bony structures of the shoulder so that we can understand why it is we're built this way. So if we look at our skeleton, we have our handy dandy hand and our thumb so that we can pick things up. That's a really, really important step in our evolution um, as humans is that we have these fine bones of the hand so that we could use tools and pick things up so that we could um, better mold our landscape and our environment. Now we have two bones of the lower arm and then we have the humerus of the upper arm as well as the scapula on the back of the body that slides on the rib cage, hopefully, and also the clavicle on the front of the body uh, which helps to stabilize the whole structure. Now, what happens a lot of times is that, and you'll hear this a lot in Pilates studios, is it, you know, get your shoulder blades down and back. Well, that's a good cue for a moment, but really the shoulder blade is designed to move on the span of the rib cage in a bell-like fashion. Now, why is that? Again, let's go back to the hand. The beauty of the shoulder blade actually lives in the hand here. So again, I was talking about how through evolution, we had our thumbs, we grew our thumbs so that we can grab things and use tools. Now, if you think about it, if I'm grabbing a weight just like this, and I only cue my shoulder blade to be in one place on the rib cage and spine, what happens when I lift the heavy weight that I can still hold on to? I'm gonna create excess tension in the neck and in the shoulder girdle. What we have to remember is the shoulder blade's job is to take this weight, into the hand, it transfers it to the two bones, the, the radius and the ulna, into the one almost tuning fork of the humerus. Now as the arm goes up, my shoulder blade is really designed to move in opposition to the weight in the hand to offset this gravitational pull and disperse it evenly into the rib cage so that I don't overuse and um, damage any of the shoulder girdle. A lot of people have issues with frozen shoulder, rotor, rotator cuff injuries because their shoulder blade isn't actually sliding and traversing on the rib cage to oppose the hand. This is major. In our life now, if you think about what modern life looks like nowadays, people are hunched over their computers, on their smartphones. Quite frankly, they're over-stabilizing the shoulder girdle. It was never like that you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago, if you think about what men, you know, man was doing, we were hanging from trees, swinging from trees, throwing spears. Right? That means that there was a lot of opportunity for tractioning of the shoulder girdle. The shoulder girdle thrives on mobility. So it's not that we want an unstable shoulder joint, but most people have a over, overbearing structural issues in the connective tissue and in the musculature of the, of the shoulder blade that disallows the movement of the humerus, the clavicle and the shoulder blade on the torso. Now, there are a few things that you can do really simply and easily to help your clients and yourself find easier shoulder girdle mechanics. Here in, uh, at Fusion, we really, really stress release work. This is such an important 
core training principle. Before you can input new information into your client's bodies, you have to take the old programming out. It can be as simple as rolling out the shoulder girdle on the tennis ball. Now, I was just talking a little bit about tractioning the shoulder girdle. We should be able to allow our bodies to hang and move from the shoulder girdle. There's a lot of play here, but only if you have availability in the connective tissue. So what I'm gonna show you is we have, we call this the Great Dane tennis ball. This is a larger tennis ball. It's brilliant for all sorts of nooks and crannies of the body to help train the connective tissue. But what I like to do is get my clients on the Cadillac or the floor, and what you can do is have them lay down and get the ball right into their pec tissue. This is where a lot of my, my uh, computer people get very, very tight. And you have them swing the arm just to get some nice movement here. They will find a variety of different areas that will get very, very tight. You want them to breathe into them to find a little bit of space and ease. Now, to up the ante a little bit, you can take a hand weight, and I call this a pendulum arm. So we take the ball into the pec tissue. You can have them rest their opposite, their hand, or their head on their opposite hand, and then they can start to just swing and let their arm drag out into the weight of the hand weight. And this is a two pound hand weight. You can do it with a one pound hand weight, but I wouldn't go over two. And this really simulates the idea, it's almost the precursor to actually being able to hang out of the shoulder, going, shoulder joint. But this is just a nice way to start to introduce a little bit of release work with a little bit more movement repatterning, allowing them to feel what it's like to actually have a little bit of space and grace in their connective tissue. Margarita writes in from Italy asking us about how to cue male pelvic floor and is it different from women and what cues are useful? And the answer to this quite simply is yes. Talking about pelvic floor work is equally as important to men as it is for women. Um, you'll see in, in your clientele base, your male clientele base, that a lot of times it's the posterior triangle of the pelvic floor. So that means the area of our pelvis here that is sitting bone, sitting bone to tailbone, typically extremely tight in men. This is what causes a lot of their hip tightness and also contributes to lower back pain and issues that men typically feel. Now, men have a little bit less movement of the pelvis because their structure is different than women and they have different hormones that affect their connective tissue. So there's not as much laxity, but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be doing pelvic floor work and pelvic floor release like women do. Um, so what we like to do at the studio is either use an overball, which is a little bit of a squishier ball, or a Mikasa ball is really, really nice uh, to, to use with your male clients. It's a little bit smaller because their pelvis is a little bit narrower at the bottom, typically. Now, what I like to do is have my clients come up and have them sit on the overball or the Mikasa ball, sitting bones on either side, pubic bone, tailbone in the back. They will be able to do this, obviously. They have to arrange themselves so that they're comfortable on it. But here we cue lots of breath, maybe some little movements on the ball. They'll really start to feel what's happening in their posterior pelvic floor. A lot of times they'll be very uncomfortable. It takes them a few moments to get used to it. And for some people it's gonna be so tight that you're just gonna to have to roll up a small hand towel and start from there. Again, when they sit back down, they're gonna feel a huge difference in the posterior pelvic floor, lots of space. And I guarantee you this is really gonna immediately help lower back pain and strain. Again, I just wanna show you the Mikasa ball is going to be at the bottom part of the pelvis between the sitting bones, the pubic bone, and the tailbone. That's it for today, and if you have any questions that you'd like to see answered on an upcoming episode, please put it in the comment section below on Facebook, Twitter, or our forum. Thanks so much for watching, and never stop learning. Today, we're gonna to be talking about shoulder mechanics. 
Uh, <laughs>